who is the artist? The artist is the one who develops his own frequency, who creates his own secondary world. And the revolutionary also is the one who is speaking into this world, who is bringing the kingdom of heaven here to this earth. Cooperation, collaboration, generosity, nurturing, tenderness, ferocious courage. My little brother's suicide prompted me to dig deeper into healing the generational trauma that he and I were born into. My brother's death is actually quite understandable. He died because he believed that he had exhausted himself and he believed that he was alone, alone in that exhaustion, that attrition. How many times had my brother put himself back together before he reached this ultimate moment of surrender? Could there have been an alternate story for him? If so, what might that have looked like? For one month, I lived with my brother before he died. Denver, Colorado. I was careful. I did not offer advice. I did reach out to him many times. I asked him questions. I tried to hug him sometimes. It scared him. Several times during my stay, my brother expressed an interest in talking about shame. When I asked questions, he shut down every time, closed off. I asked him directly to continue the conversation. He walked away. The heaviness that rests on us sometimes, it clouds our vision. We get lost in our own pain, our own disappointment, our own disappointing lives. We get angry. Some of us have a difficult time seeing through this illusion of angry aloneness. The study of epigenetics now tells us that DNA can be altered by traumatic experience. Some of us inherit a dense body of pain. You might call it a generational curse, bad karma possibly. Maybe we are working something out from another life reincarnated. I am not an expert on any of these subjects but I will try to answer the questions that I posed just a moment ago. Could there have been an alternate story for my brother? And if so, what might that have looked like? My brother died alone. He needed a tribe. He needed to be held. He needed to learn how to have that conversation about shame. He needed to experience the connection that our ancestors once experienced when we walked this earth as hunter-gatherers together. He needed to be solving real problems with real people in real time. He needed to work hard at what he was best at. He needed time and space to discover what he was best at. People like my brother and I were raised in a deep illusion of separateness. We were taught that we were separate from everyone else. Our social skills were largely coping mechanisms. We were raised with no wisdom practice. We had a father who crushed us in his own fear and a mother who was a victim. Now, people like my brother and myself are middle-aged men. The coping skills that worked for us in the past are no longer working. Those props that held us up are no longer propping. For some of us, we've asked to have those props removed. This is a willing journey that we've gone on to, to discover a deeper expression of honesty in ourselves. Some of us have been working for years trying to overcome these neuroses and character defects that result from a shame-based identity. I am an expert on these subjects. My life has been a deep study of self-inflicted suffering and the recovery thereof. I have much to share on this subject. Men like myself have much to offer. Right now, there are some of us who are in exile, 
We're in the wilderness. Our survival depends upon the assembly of what I am calling depth tribes. From a mental health care perspective, we might see the depth tribes as the medicine for the sickness of alienation and isolation that we experience. Homo sapiens evolved as an organismic being. We were not separate. We did not function separately. We were in deep cooperation with one another, our brains firing together, moving across an ever-changing landscape, following herds and harvest. This man that you see before you today is on a search. He is on a creative search. This man has exhausted himself in the paid work environment many times. He is now seeking his deepest expression of worth with the faith that this effort to be true to his deepest self will result in a salvation that will inform his children and the generations to come. Big vision, right? Deep vision. We know, we know we're good in our hearts when we want wellness for us, for all, and for the future. This man believes that the depth tribe is a great part of the awakening that must come in order for humanity to make it over this evolutionary threshold toward which we are now stumbling. We must show our children that we were willing to do something different. We must show them that we were willing to give ourselves to what we knew to have depth. We must show our children our depth now. It is in this show of our generation's communal strength that we will discover our greater mind, that one mind of love. I seek assembly. I offer my deepest expression of worth to community. I believe that as we invest in an individual, we are investing in a tribe. An investment in a tribe is an investment in the future of humanity. I thank you for the investment that you have made in me, the trust that you offered in the invitation to this sacred space. I ask that you would search your heart for how you might contribute to the development of depth tribes. This is now my personal quest for salvation, and also, I believe, a great part of what I envision to be the salvation of our species. As we gather together in this communion, we will have great ideas, <laughs> life-changing ideas. We will become self-sufficient, working together in ways without precedent. So many have invested so much in this man. He carries a great deal of insight and compassion, and much good can come for many in the re realization of this depth tribe vision. I have struggled all my life to meet the requirements of regular work environments. I've tried many different jobs and approaches. I have worked with my character defects and my attitude problems. I was able to remain at my last professional job as a physical therapist assistant for four years. During that time, I went to one psychiatric unit and two mental health treatment facilities, and I had to walk away from my responsibility suddenly several times in addition to those FMLA ab absences. I have applied for disability from the federal government and I was denied benefits. Since then, I have worked two regular jobs. I was able to last for four months at each of these jobs before I had to walk away. I've been diagnosed with bipolar one, PTSD, ADHD, and severe migraine headaches. I have done much time in talk therapy. I have worked the 12-step program, practiced Vipassana meditation extensively, uh, completed the 365-day A Course in Miracles. I have uh, been to Exorcist. I have been honest with friends. I have educated myself. I've applied myself diligently to the big practice of life. I even gave myself to the psychotropic cocktails that the psychiatrist recommended. Big Pharma is not my medicine man. <laughs> The formation of these depth tribes is a vision of hope that has come to me as I seek answers that will sustain me in this physical body. Viewing my life through a lens of pathology seems to only increase my helplessness. So now I approach life through this faith-based, mission-oriented attitude. Since I left my job as a PTA several years ago, I have received much help and encouragement 
I have received housing and encouragement to pursue this healing path. Every video that you may see on YouTube represents an effort to show up in this world. It represents my effort to share something of value with my fellow human being. I can no longer live as a victim. I can no longer consider myself less than anyone else. I can make no apologies for this condition that I find myself in. I have no physical address. I have no income. I have no insurance. I do not wish to be supported by government. I wish to find relevance in a community, in communities which can provide support for those who bring their part. You might say that I am an artist looking for his audience. You could say that I am an entrepreneur who is attempting to monetize his skill sets. My current position does not make me inferior to anyone else. I am not to behave like a beggar. I am not to act out of desperation. I am to offer myself, my depth, my insight to those who express interest. I am to receive joyfully and to joyfully give. I am looking for a place to continue the depth practice that now sustains me. This practice consists of physical and intellectual pursuits as they engage in the spirit realm. I am to be informed by the depth practices of others. I am to be a teacher. I am to be a student. There is a great desperation that has fallen on our species. My personal struggle does not make me unique. It makes me human. As we come together, as we help one another to deepen our spiritual life experiences, as we realize that communal love, we are generating the energy that is now needed for our species to find solutions to the diverse and many problems that we face. Einstein said that we cannot solve a problem from the same level of consciousness that created it. These depth tribes are the incubators in which this next level of consciousness will be born from. Some of us, like myself and my brother, were born into a greater deficit. We called shame love, and our social skills were developed by our wounded inner children coping mechanisms. I have been reverse engineering these depth skills for many years now. My solution is these depth tribes. For those of you who may have been born into more supportive environments, you may already be immersed in something like a depth tribe, but I am still searching. I am still searching for a way in which I can support myself in this monetary jungle. I am developing my skills as a healer, entrepreneur, and artist, learning lots of new skills. This is what my brother needed. He needed to find a place of honor among a people. He needed more help than I could offer him. He needed time. He needed compassion. We needed him to bring his part to our community. When we help the individual, we further the work of the tribe. And when we further the work of the tribe, we serve all of humanity. Labor and the expression of worth.